Welcome to the Battlegrounds. Hey everyone, this is Brian Kibler, and I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to play Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Battle cries in Battlegrounds are a lot different than in normal Hearthstone because you keep the stats from, say, a Defender of Argus permanently. So that makes the effect that you get from the Defender of Argus a lot more valuable than it would be in a normal game. I think one of the strongest bosses that can be difficult to figure out is really Shutterwalk. In my experience, Shutterwalk can be especially powerful if you go something like Murlocs, and you can end up doubling your Cold Light Seers, or even if you get late into the game, a Gentle Megasaur, and that can just be an absolutely huge payoff if you get there. There's a lot of battle cries in the Murloc tribe, so whether you use the Shutterwalk hero or you pick up a uh, Brand Bronzebeard later on, uh, it's gonna allow you to really make powerful use out of uh, those Cold Light Seers, and Murlocs are uh, a really interesting tribe. You really wanna try and build toward the late game with Murlocs. Some of the most important stuff is building up your Murlocs' health more than anything. I would say that Cold Light Seer is probably the most important mid-game card for the deck because you wanna build up the health of your Murlocs, and then hopefully, optimally, you get to that late game Gentle Megasaur, you can give them Divine Shield, you can give them Poisonous, you can even get Poisonous in there earlier with Toxfin, and that can really let your small Murlocs grow up and uh, be a real force to be reckoned with late in the game. Death Rattles and Battlegrounds are really interesting because all your creatures will kind of always trade with all of your opponent's creatures. So say you have a Savannah High Main and you're playing normal Hearthstone, your opponent could just attack you in the face. But in Battlegrounds, well, that High Main and the Hyenas will all fight until all of them are dead. So you're guaranteed to get value. Placement for Death Rattles can get pretty tricky, especially if you have something like a Cadgar or a Baron Rivendare. You really need to make sure there's space for all of the things that your Death Rattle spawns to actually come into play. You'll often want to place your Death Rattles uh, to the left of your board so that you're ensured that they'll attack and get themselves killed, especially if you have things that care about those Death Rattles. Say you have a Scavenging Hyena and a Rat Pack, right? You want your Rat Pack and the rats to die before your Hyena ends up attacking, so keeping it on the left is usually a good idea. Resource management can be really tricky in Battlegrounds. Uh, the, the only clear time that I know that I want to tech up is usually turn two. I almost always will tech my tavern up on turn two. Later in the game, uh, it can be tempting to tech up and try and get to the, the stronger minions, but if you do that too often, too early, you can end up just leaving yourself behind and taking a lot of damage. So usually you'll want to wait until your tavern tier is a, a bit cheaper and you actually build out a board in the middle turns. Certain uh, directions, whether it's in minion types or uh, in sort of synergies, whether it's Battle Cry or Death Rattle, have specific cards you're looking for, say Baron Rivendare. And you, if you have good early cards for that, uh, that strategy, you'll want to try to tech up to that particular tier so you can aim for that card and sometimes even stay on that tier longer than usual to ensure you have a smaller pool of stuff to find that key. Whenever you uh, get a triple or a, or a gold minion, uh, you get the option to discover a minion of a tier above. That means that sometimes you'll even want to hold on to your, your gold minion until you have a chance to tech up to the next tier. Uh, you'll often want to, at least if you have the opportunity, to tech up in the same turn and then play your gold minion. Certainly don't do it in the other order because you'll get end up getting a minion of the tier below. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, even though getting gold minions or triples can be very valuable, don't spend a ton of time chasing ones, especially from the early levels. If you have a, a tier one uh, minion that you're looking to triple, sometimes if you just have those sitting in play for too long, you can end up taking a lot of damage just trying to find that last minion, and the payoff ends up not being nearly worth it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that all the players share the same minion pool. So if you play your first couple rounds and you see that, oh, all of the other players seem to be playing, say, Murlocs, it might be a good idea for you not to try to go Murlocs because you'll be fighting with them for all the same key cards. Uh, I would say some of the good bosses to start with are the ones that really kind of push you in a specific direction. Something like uh, Maleficent Mana Storm, you know, gives you a good direction, I want to go mechs this game. The Curator gives you an amalgam that you, know, you clearly want to build up things that, that buff that amalgam and uh, go that way. Uh, I would probably steer clear of some of the ones that have really expensive activated powers, like uh, Jaraxxus, because it's going to be really difficult to figure out how to best use that, and you can trap yourself by using it too much early on. One thing to keep in mind while you're playing Battlegrounds is to pay attention to your boss's ability. Oftentimes they'll point you in a specific direction and you'll have a lot more success trying to go in a direction that fits with your boss than one that goes against it. Thanks for watching and I hope these tips help you out when you run into each other in the Battlegrounds.